and welcome everyone to our for DS book club on our packages uh, for those joining uh, live online and people that are watching the YouTube channel. Uh, this is chapter four for our packages, fundamental development workflows. And for this week, uh, we have uh, Abdu uh, going over chapter four. I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Abdu. I'm going to present chapter four. Uh, I, as I was reading through this chapter, I found it uh, quite interesting. Though I'm completely new to uh, um, R packages, so I'll be very happy as I explain if someone um, interrupts or comes up with any questions or suggestions, I would highly appreciate it. Yeah, and, and that's it. Uh, that's a, a, uh, uh, the line objectives is to know when and how to make uh, an R package um, and like to re revisit what, what are R Studio uh, projects. Uh, why not messed up with the, the default working directory? Uh, in the part, in the, in the chapter, the, the authors suggest that, you know, it's better to just stick to the default working directory. And then uh, test driving code, uh, he mentions stuff about that. And then there he mentions about uh, the, 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 the load all the load all uh, function in the div tool stuff like this. Yeah, the the suggested that you know you do a survey of the existing packages on CRAN before you start uh, um uh, before you like uh, create your own package because if there is already an existing package uh, if that does what you want to do then there is no point in uh, creating your own package. However, if, if there is a, is a package that is very similar to what you want to do, you could just uh, uh, you could you could just uh, yeah, you could just uh, maybe do some adjustments on that package. In in that case, uh, you will not have to create the whole thing from scratch. So uh, you could check the package on CRAN, which is a good way to uh, save a lot of time. Uh, for some of the payoffs, the product, uh, you will get a package. If you have a package, your your life will be better when this functionality is implemented formally in a in a package, in a sense. Um, and in the process of uh, developing your project, uh, you, your your package, sorry, you you learn a lot, and and that is rewarding, and it could uh, um, help you uh, hone your skills as a hard developer or uh, as a guy that is out. Yeah, any any comments or anything one on the other? Okay. Okay. Uh, now you mentioned some possible considerations, like some uh, possible, uh, how I call it, um, guidelines to to follow. Uh, like ensure that the package fits well within the domain of existing R packages. And then he gives some um, examples like the, for modeling packages, use the hard hard package helps the developer use best practices and ensures that the resulting package can be within the tidy model uh, ecosystem. So you don't want to create a package wherein uh, in that particular domain, it's uh, something like uh, it, it doesn't uh, fit well. In that case, um, that might be something that would possibly discourage others from using your package because it's not doesn't fit well within that specific domain. So this is something to to really consider for when uh, like building packages. Yeah, any any sort of comments on this? That was the first time I learned what hard hat package is. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else knows what uh, similar packages outside of modeling, um, but I thought that was interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. For me, also, when I was reading through the chapter, was the first time I came across this hack. Uh, this.
Yeah, now he'd mentioned some naming conventions that we, it's better to stick uh, with. Um, he uh, mentioned the serial naming convention used uh, for existing R packages on, on CRAN. Um, the law is, so uh, the name can only consist of letters, numbers, and periods. Uh, it must start with a letter. So you cannot start with a number. And you cannot end with a period as well. Uh, so no underscores and hyphens. So what 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 uh, they, they really recommend is to avoid using periods um, and let the name also be easily, you can easily Google the name, something like that. So you also try to avoid confusion with existing R packages uh, on, on CRAN or Bioconductor or GitHub or well-known packages from other languages like NumPy and, and stuff like this. You completely discourage uh, something like this. And preferable for it to all be lowercase. Uh, abbreviations to reduce the number of length, like uh, this example of uh, BRMS for Bayesian regression models. And uh, adding the capital R just to make it fun, you know, that, that's also something they, they uh, suggest uh, also don't use like uh, Facebook you know our Facebook makes better yeah uh, 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 here is a, a fun blog post that, that so this this guy this post by uh, by Nick uh, sort of reiterates this point and and it's a it's a very nice blog post and it talks about uh, some uh, about this naming convention yeah. You know. And like also for the name to be some like for it could be yeah it could be a yeah anyone wants to ask something about the, the naming convention Yeah, this is very good for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I can see this. Mm. The uh, fourth section uh, of the chapter looks at uh, creating a new package. You could use the we could use the the use this function and uh, create package, and then here we put the package name. It could be any package, the name of the package, and that does it automatically. Or we could use the R functionality by using the 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 file new project uh, new directory and then the R package. But basically, they 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 use this function and they using the the, the 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 menu it's basically all the same because it's uh so it's really just one way yeah so the use this is from the the, the diff tool side so we can uh, just call it so basically it, it, it's saying what does this uh, uh does it's uh create the directory so it, it's the default uh directory for you um and and then you have the description file which is basically a text file and you have the name file and then the the package name then our project so basically as you follow this procedure it it also automatically creates a project for you so the package will be created in a in a in a in, in a in a in a project sort of it does all that for you automatically which uh the 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 author recommend not to change you just want to stick to the default but they also highlighted that like expert uh, 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 package developers are very okay with navigating through this and might not mind much about about following stick, uh, strictly to this convention and then you have the other files like the r build ignore and the git ignore these are all once you create your package it uh, it uh, sort of r automatically does all this for you and then you will see them um, in the uh, you you see them in the uh, like the, the package environment you will see them there uh, or you will see them like sorry on the the, the files you will see them all there.
and uh, it strongly uh, uh, warns us from using the package uh, dot skeleton uh, because it creates a package which will uh, lead to errors when running our command build. Um, and it's not consistent with the deep pool style of development, so it completely discourages us from using uh, this uh, 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 package dot skeleton function. So uh, basically, the, where the, uh, the 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 package will be at, it's, uh, this is distinct from where your R packages are installed. So it makes sense to put uh, it similar to where you keep your other R projects. Yeah. So like in 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 his case, you have the user, and then you have the uh, the document. So um, uh, so basically, it's the the directory. It's better to put it in a directory where you have your other R projects. Uh, this way, it will it will be easier to. Um, trace it and all that. Yeah, if someone wants to make any comments here, I think there. Um, I'm just grateful for the new uh, dev tools making it easier. Um, it seems like package dot skeleton. Uh, it's is quite limited compared to uh, the way uh, this. Package development is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like it's better to just stick with the uh, div tools and it, and its various functionalities than, yeah. So now basically it's uh, showing in this section how we create uh, our studio project. Um, uh, you can use uh, diff tools within the R studio and vice versa. Um, so, so, so some of the benefits of uh, um, um, having an R studio project, um, working within a project as opposed to just having your R script and just do your analysis as, uh, or just create a package like that without inside a project. Uh, each project is isolated uh, and Code is connect, it's it's contained within the project, so which makes it easier. Like every everything is just within that same um, file, so it makes it uh, easier. Is it easy to start up a project in a fresh instance of R Studio? Helps mitigate workspace uh, overlap, uh, like uh, uh, example of function maxing and overriding uh, accidentally same name objects. Um, and and then it has a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts that could make life very easy. Yeah, any comments on this? To make an art project is you could use uh, use this create uh, package, um, um, make an art project uh, from an existing um, package. Oh, okay. So if you already have a package and then you just want to make it. Uh, the, the, the package inside of uh, a project, you can use the, the menu. You can just go to files, new projects, and then existing directory. Or you can automatic, you can just directly call the use this, uh, create package, and then it will it will put uh, the, this particular package in a, in a project sort of. Yeah, so basically that's the the directory for the art project will have like the, the the name of the package and then dot art project. Yeah, like a file like that. Yeah, any uh comments on Um, it says the best case is for all these names to be the same. Um, yeah, I think it does that by default, but I'm I'm not sure um, why you might change that up or why someone might want to do that. Yeah, yeah, because it it will it will just uh, bring up some unnecessary issues because since it does all that uh, by default, so it's just better to stick to that. Uh, well, the R project name can be anything. 
the convenience thing. Um, and the name of the package is taken up. Okay, well, that's, that's where you have to put it. Yeah, so 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 to do to um launch the the R project, you can just double click on the on the uh the the R dot R project, and then it will file, and then the the project will be run. It will it will be launched uh on R Studio. So um, it's trying to say more about the use this, but it's like the use this function does not take a part. So uh, I think here it's, uh, it's trying to explain that it, it just takes the default part. It, it assumes that everything is at the default um, directory. So there is nothing like uh, it taking another um, directory. I, I'm not sure if that's the, that's the right point here. If anyone wants to. I think use these functions. Mm -hmm. I think that you are outside of the folder that you want to 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 change. If you want to change the current directory you are, you need to write po a point. Um, sorry, I I didn't get you. No. Yes, I was planning that they use these mm -hmm. functions most of yeah. the time. Understand that you want to create a new directory or you want to point out a directory, but you are in the parent directory. Okay, if you yeah. You want yeah. to edit the current part that you are in, you need to write a point. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah that's it. So it so basically it assumes that it assumes the current R Studio project, uh, the active use this project, current working. So it assumes all this. So like like you like you explained, yeah. So, so basically in the book they, they stress this so it's don't don't try to change this default just keep it uh, as it is uh, it, it makes life easier for you yeah. so you can uh, uh, double check that uh, these three uh, directories are coincide coinciding by running the, the use this uh, this you call the Project uh, situation report function, which uh, basically will give you uh, the current status of the project, and then you know, uh, in the in the book they 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 really highlight that they recommend uh, using this uh, function frequently because it, it 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 in a sense you know if there are errors because it will give you if there if you have warnings like uh, also I think errors and and notes which you can like uh, fix especially if you want to. Uh, put the, the project on on cran, but if you want to wait until all the project is done and then you want to run this uh, project uh, situation report, it could be difficult to fix some of the, the the warnings or messages that they might bring up. Yeah, so this they highly recommend, and they they even say that in their daily workflow they use this uh, function a lot. They use it a lot. So that function is validating the project, not the yeah, package. Yeah, yeah in, in, like the package. Uh, uh, I, I think it's the, the 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 package itself. Okay. Right. I, I'm. I'm not. I. I think it's the the package. So you know the package is. Um. So we we put it in a uh, in a project to. To, so sort of to get some of the benefits of having a uh, work in a project like setting sort of because they, they highly recommend that if you want to put this on cran always run this then because uh, I think cran have some rules that if you have some um some some like some warning messages they won't accept you know you have to fix those things and so sometimes you have notes, like they give you notes, but um, they mention that the notes are usually some minor 
uh, issues, which you know sometimes you could CRAN could allow you to publish your your package, even if you don't fix all the all the the, the notes that this 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 uh, project situation report will highlight. Something like that. Yeah, any any comments or thoughts on this? Yeah, like uh, that's the the final uh, section of this chapter. It's uh, the chapter is not very long. That's uh, driving a package. So basically, here yeah, it's trying to the main thing. It's about the load all. Uh, uh, function under the like the uh, div tools. So you you have the 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 build and load, which is like the in the R command. So what it does, it can take uh, from the source. It uh, take the uh, like the package from the source, but before it has it in memory, it has to sort of install it. Whilst the div tools um, load all function will. Uh, the package from source, and then uh, it could uh, automatically have it in memory, like in your computer. And the library, before it, the, the the library function could work, the package has to be installed before the library function could call the or could put the the uh, the, the, the 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 particular package. So they highly recommend using the, the the load all. Running the load all function is the fastest way to reload the function in your package, much faster than installing it, like basically. So uh, this is helpful for iteratively updating or tweaking functions you are working on. So it, it talks something about this uh, test uh, uh, function. Like uh, if anyone has uh, any experience with this or any thoughts on this uh, test function. Yeah, you need to create a test um, file inside mm -hmm. the test. And then you will run the test when you run test and yeah, it, it works really well. It's no, it's not, it's not so hard. You oh. just need to create a simple example, maybe with some random numbers and you just say hey, equals to and, and it works most of the time in that way. Awesome. Well, I had a comment about the load all stuff. Um, so there's a temptation to run your stuff, uh, just stores your script and it creates kind of weird problems within the package development workflow and load all does it correctly. So it uh, erases the existing definitions of functions um, and then it runs all the dot .r scripts in your development environment and updates everything. So and there are some slight differences with what library does um, as well, libraries is loading something that's already installed in the and is traceable in the lib paths, while Lodo just runs all of the Dota scripts. So if you have something, uh, some subtle points happen when you have when you define objects in your Dota scripts, but you do not export them, uh, and there are some other corner cases where Lodo and library different um but the yeah the appropriate workflow uh with dev tools and use this within package development is load all um or something else i was thinking about yeah i'm not remembering <laughs> that's the comment yeah well thanks thanks for uh that yeah, and, and as far as far as tests go, that's that's a separate well, there is probably a separate chapter on that. Uh, and there, there is more going on than just uh doing simple numbers basically. Ideally every 
input should be tested that it's specified correctly uh, and all the inputs should break properly if you expect the number but you see the data frame or you see the character your functions should have checks for that and uh, with stop of not and whatnot and there should be case pointing tests with bad inputs um, but this that can be well proper testing is more than one uh, one hour presentation in my opinion over oh. yeah thanks thanks for, for that yeah any i think that's the almost that's the end of it if someone has any other comments they want to give Yeah, that's it from me. Yeah. Um, my last comment in the chat, uh, and I don't know if we're gonna get to this later in the testing chapters, um, but I was curious if like using test all is more common, just testing everything at once versus like just one test file. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's, if we get into that at all. I don't know if they get into it, but I am finally getting in the habit of just testing my one file until like, until the end or at the end of whatever I'm working on. So mm -hmm. I iterate and iterate and do uh, control T is what I have test uh, test file set at. So I'm just control T over and over. And then once that's good, I'll do a control shift T to test the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, probably with, you know, whatever, there's some mixing in there. Like if I think I might've broken something, I'll do a control shift T and see. Um, but yeah, definitely a mix. I, I used to always just do test all because it was like the hotkey I knew basically, but um, it's nice to focus. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a good workflow. So I had a question um, that came up when I was testing a package. Um, I've been learning to write tests, but I'm not yet super comfortable with test-driven development. And I still definitely wanna have like a script where I've got my functions actually being put into practice and like used and so I can fiddle around with them and try them and I'm curious what's the proper way to incorporate like a test script with the functions actually in use into a workflow like where would that script live and um oh. is that just like a terrible idea or hmm. what I would recommend um like it depends what you're going to do with the package but uh vignettes are good for that um, because, you know, don't keep it to yourself, like show other people the, uh, examples that you have. I, um, I used to be like religious about everything I did was in a vignette. And then, so you always have kind of the demo of what you're doing. And I'm not as, I don't know, not as good about that because I will find, I make a whole function and I'm like, oh, wait, now that I'm actually trying to use this, that doesn't make any sense. I have to totally rewrite that. So working in vignettes also protects against that so i'm a fan of that and we will see that in uh it's a while actually i think it's 15 or something but yeah Seventeen. I do like that they included the shortcut hotkey from our studio in uh, in the chapter. Um, I feel like I need to get like a poster of that and just hang it up. Are there um are there any other um 
questions or comments on chapter four? I can wait for uh, if folks. Yeah, are... I, can, I, can, I, can, I can have another comment. Um, so, in terms of motivation for the package, um, basically the book says, well, if you want to write some cool functionality, blah, blah, blah. Um, there are other smart ways of utilizing the, basically the package workflow and package backbone and everything that's in there. Uh, basically each standalone analytical project could be a package. So one of the recommendations uh, that I first heard maybe about five years ago, and I've seen it published in various places like the American Statistician and the Journal of um, Statistics Education was to create uh, packages for your research papers. So each um, each package is basically well. This is this is your data set, uh, and the three functions are loading all of the data and showing the analysis. But you use the package infrastructure for documenting your data. So that's one one thing that you can do. And another thing I'm using packages more and more uh, internally is for a specific project where. Um, well, I'm I'm a service statistician, so the nature of, of the work that I have is on I take samples, uh, create samples on the front end of a project, and I create analytical weights on the uh, tail end of the project, and then I write a little report uh, about what all the sampling and what the weighting things were uh, within within a given project. So, and that would be a couple of markdown files. Which I've converted to vignettes and uh, the whole process is structured as targets, which is totally different. Uh, should be totally different R4DS channel, but that's something. Uh, targets is a, is a system that tracks dependencies between your objects in R, uh, where objects can be functions and can be data frames uh, and uh, ggplots and whatnot. So basically, if I have anything that has more than five of those objects, five of those data frames, I start thinking, well, this 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 should have been a target to begin with. And uh, uh, and then the functions are saying, well, take those two objects and join them by whatever. And that, that's a function because it creates a new object. And that's what targets um, need, need to track. So um, basically, Combining the infrastructure of package development with testing tools and documentation tools are oxygen and targets is uh, another reason to have stuff set up as an R package. Strong opinion. That's about it. Oh, thank you. I love that. Uh, targets, uh, some using it for scientific papers and, and uh, different projects. Um, yeah, I would imagine if you're like a freelancer too or something, it would be helpful for uh, structuring your workflow too. Um, anyone else have like different motivations for um, creating a package besides uh, those and the ones in the book? The only other, and I'm not sure the exact reason behind it, but it does make the workflow easier for me is um, uh, using Gollum, which uh, creates um, packages for Shiny apps. Um, that's uh, an opinionated framework, uh, but I, it, I found it helpful. Um, so I... I think that might go with the uh, the workflow reason as well, but um, that that's another good one.
Well, if um, I'll see if I can. I'm looking at the um, sign up sheet now. Uh, uh, looks like we have a link here. Um, let me share the sign up sheet. It looks like we have a couple folks for the next two weeks. Um, next Monday, Rebecca is presenting on chapter five, the package within, and then Angel for chapter six in our code. Um, and then we're going to have a, a two week break for the holidays. And then uh, in the new year, um, Kaya is going to come back with chapter seven on data. Um, so thank you for everyone that signed up so far. Um, there are some available spots, um, in the new year. Um, if you have any like resolutions or anything like that to, uh, present, you can certainly do that. Um, but yeah, we should be good throughout the rest of this year. And then, uh, we'll start back up in January. All right. Um, so if there's not anything else, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next week.